Hello ladies, welcome back to A Cup of Tea with Shauna Marie. It has been a very long time and um, just thinking a lot about what 2018 will look like for me this year and one of the things is that I really do want to come in front of the camera once a week for the whole year and um, so it's still 2017 right now but I'm gonna start today and uh, it may mean that there'll be no time for editing. Right now I don't have any, um, well, I have to learn the, the new editing system that we have and the, my old computer is just so slow right now. I don't know what's going on. So today we're having an unedited video <laughs> and that should be interesting. But I wrote down some notes today so that I can work off of some notes that I was thinking about this morning before the sun even rose. Let me just stick that there for right now. This morning I have made in this nice little teapot um, ginger, honey, and lemon. If you'd like to try it yourself, it's really a nice drink. It, my husband says it's like a tonic. If you put in a cup or, or a teapot um, some ginger root that you actually got the, the peels off and then grated it and then a whole bunch of honey and a whole bunch of lemon and then hot water. It really is good and the longer you leave it in there the stronger it gets because the ginger is really spicy. I actually did that last night and then when we were done drinking it I put the leftover in the refrigerator because it still had all that ginger in it so this is like round two and that's as much as I'll use it. Next time I'll have to do fresh ginger but it's worth a try. Especially this time of year with colds and stuff, it's pretty strong. It's nice. So, today, um, I was thinking this morning, I don't know why, maybe this is just because I'm thinking about my life and how I want to use the coming year. Um, I thought of that line that is in scripture, redeeming the time because the days are evil. <clears throat> so I looked it up on Google, where is that? You know, we could look in a concordance, but these days you can basically look it up on the computer and find the exact reference. And it comes from Ephesians 5.16. So, redeeming the time because the days are evil. How do I want to spend the coming year? How will I use the short time that God has given me, and I don't know how long that is, in the way that matters for eternity? And um, that's a thought for any of us to think over. In the meantime, even though I do enjoy reading out of the New American Standard, I've started to read also from the King James. So bear with me if it's difficult to understand, but maybe that's good for our brains. <laughs> um, let's read most of chapter 5 of Ephesians. It says, Be ye therefore followers of God, as dear children, and walk in love, as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. I just want to stop right there. Two verses already. It says, Be ye followers of God, as dear children, and walk in love, as Christ also hath loved us. So we're followers of God. And how does that look? How did Christ love us? Just thinking about how Christ loved us and our call to follow after God and Jesus is God. What kind of life should we be living? It says, And walk in love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. Are you and I ready and willing to walk after the manner of Christ and give ourselves every day as an offering and a sacrifice to God? It would be in thanksgiving for what he has already done for us and saving us from our sins, dear Christian ladies. Let's go on. Chapter 5, verse 3. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness let it not be once named among you as becometh the saints, 
neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor jesting which are not convenient but rather giving of thanks just that by itself how easy it is for myself anyway to complain but how much God is pleased by our giving of thanks for this you know that no whoremonger nor unclean person nor covetous man that should hit home to many of us we don't want to be covetous who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God let no man deceive you with vain words but because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience but not oh be not ye therefore partakers with them for ye were some, sometimes darkness but now are ye light in the Lord walk as children of light for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth proving what is acceptable unto the Lord and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather reprove them for it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light for whatsoever doth make manifest is light wherefore he saith awake thou that sleepest sleepest and arise from the dead and Christ shall give thee light see then that ye walk circumspectly not as fools but as wise redeeming the time because the days are evil wherefore be ye not unwise but understanding what the will of the Lord is and be not drunk with wine wherein is excess but be filled with the Spirit speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God I'd like to stop on that one right there for just a second because even though he's about to tell us about submitting wives to husbands and husbands loving their wives and how all that looks I am seeing it says submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. So I I I may be wrong, but I I think that this is not just about wives and husbands, but in the body of Christ um are we available to each other for fellowship? Are we ready to serve one another and take care of each other um the way God would have us do it? Are we putting our priorities in this life far beyond the eternal ones that keep us from serving our brothers and sisters in Christ or serving others who may by our light shining come to Christ? Are we giving time for each other and our energy to help each other? Are we spending time in God's Word so that we can also lead people to the Lord or lead those who know the Lord? closer to him to know the truth and the whole truth and be completely instructed properly in how to walk in this life. I would say that possibly the submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God would, would include all that. And we'll come back to that. So it goes on. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands and unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be unto their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. So ought men to love their own to, so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself, for no man ever yet hated his own flesh, 
but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. For we are members of the body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and be joined to unto his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you, in particular, so love his wife even as himself, and the wife see to it that she reverence her husband. Um, I guess I end up reading the whole chapter. <laughs> um, so going to my notes now. You've heard all of chapter um, Ephesians 5. My observations this morning was that the beginning of the chapter tells us what not to be part of, while the end of the chapter tells us how to behave. So when you want to know what the will of the Lord is, it tells us. So look at it again if you missed it. <laughs> um, and right in the middle, we're urged to use a time well here. Here where we are. Dear wives, dear Christian wives, dear Christian mothers, dear Christian ladies, dear Christian friend, what will you be changing in your schedule? And I'm talking to myself too. What will you value as priority? Or what other thing in your life will you take a close look at in order to re embrace this instruction? We are told to redeem the time. And all around this phrase, we are assisted with the knowledge of what to leave behind, what not to be doing, and what to embrace. Um, the very next verse, after redeeming the time, says, Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And it goes on to explain what the will of the Lord is. And since this is a channel for ladies, I'm just going to remind us of what it says to us to do. Um, for example, in verse 19, it says, speaking to yourselves in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. I'll back up. It says, it says um, and be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God the, and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of the Lord. Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as unto the Lord. If he's a Christian or not, that's what we're supposed to do. And um, the Bible also says elsewhere that we, but through our behavior, it says through conversation, but it's through our, our chaste behavior, through not a whole lot of words, but just our, the way we live, that we can win our unsaved husbands over to the Lord. But even if we didn't, we do it as unto the Lord, and we don't nag. And, um, and of course, uh, submitting yourself to your own husband as unto the Lord doesn't mean that you follow him in in, in go ahead and sinning if he said let's go rob a bank together that's not what you would be doing that's that's that would be an exception because god is above all that and you wouldn't be robbing a bank if you're serving god so anyway um <clears throat> for the husband so it says wives submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the lord so there's one piece of what is the will of the lord that's an example of you know doing god's will for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let wives be their, be to their own husbands in everything. The verses that follow are instructions to husbands after that, but since I'm talking to ladies on my channel, I don't need to go over that part right now, except I would like to add that if you have a Christian husband, and he starts talking to you about scripture right in the middle of something you want to get done, I would ask you to remember that his job is to wash you with the water of the word and to always prioritize whatever important thing he needs to tell you 
over something that you're doing and if what you're doing is extremely important or something there might be a, a general way of saying hey um, I gotta just finish this and then I wanna sit down and hear what you're saying or something but remember when he talks to you that's part of reference is to stop and listen uh, whether it be about scripture or anything else because this is important to God um, and, and also if he's a Christian he's telling you about scripture that's his job is to wash you with the water of the word so receive it um, and uh, you know if, if, it, if it seems theologically unsound that's an opportunity to, to talk it out and pray um, but not disrespectfully but hopefully it is sound and when you give your husband the opportunity to teach you um, he's just doing what God has instructed him to do and so anyway okay so moving on um, that's that's for a Christian man to share uh, with Christian husbands that section so we're not gonna go over like what you're supposed to do the husband's supposed to do this but but we know what they're supposed to do, so when they do it, let's not make it hard for them. That's all I want to say to wives. <laughs> okay, but looking this over, I first see that we are to have a heart attitude of praising and thanking the Lord in our day, meditating on the right things and being thankful, and submitting ourselves one to another. This is spelled out more clearly in wives submitting to husbands and husbands loving their wives and I also think that the one another includes simply looking out for each other, lending an ear, caring for, for the needs of others, including strangers, etc. Also opening the word together. So I have to ask a question here. What are our priorities? If you look at yourself and what you are thinking and doing throughout the day, uh, what are your thoughts and actions saying about whether or not you are submitted one to another or redeeming the time, putting God first? And what does your calendar say? Does it line up with this chapter? Now, I'm not talking about I must be following God because I devoted 20 minutes today to the Bible. That's a good thing to do, but what about if you had plans and you got interrupted because a friend needed to talk to you or how much time are we spending on Facebook <laughs> instead of baking cookies with our kids so that we can have some quality time with them you know different things like that we need to think about but especially how much do we know the words so that we can share it with others and that we're ready and that we um, have um, an explanation for why we believe what we believe uh, and the ability to teach others ability to do whatever the Bible says what we're supposed to do. How do we even know what it says unless we're actually using our time right to learn it? Anyway, um, so if you look at yourself and what you're thinking and doing throughout the day, what are your thoughts and actions saying about whether or not you are submitted one to another? What does your calendar say? Does it line up with this chapter? And how are you at handling interruptions in your schedule? for the things God would have you do. So, since this channel is focused on Christian women, especially wives and mothers, let me also read the second part of verse 33. Because even though a whole bunch of the end there was about how husbands should be towards wives, the end says, and the wife see to it that she reverence her husband. So if you want to know the will of God, it's all in the scripture, and there's a lot there in Ephesians 5 that explains what the will of God is. I, I, I heard thankfulness. I heard setting our minds on the, you know, I, I think about, Ro well, this isn't there, but Romans, um, in Romans, it, um, excuse me, in Ephesians. No, in e Philippians. See what happens? This is what happens when I'm not editing. In Philippians um, 4, 4 through 8, it talks about rejoicing the Lord and thinking on what is good, lovely, and right. And you can look at that. Philippians 4, 4 through 8. That's a good um, section to also memorize. But the will of the Lord is all in the scripture. It tells us what is his will. And 
I think this this is close to home because I've been encounter I have encountered lately um, a particular situation in a Christian uh, a Christian lady that I know that I I feel like it's really hard to get together with this particular person to fellowship with them and when I really look I at this the situation it seems like the problem is the focus on getting bigger and better things in this earth is consuming her time so that there isn't so much time for fellowship and this is a Christian person I'm talking about now having nice things there's nothing wrong with that um, although uh, I will have nice things there's, no, there's nothing wrong with that but the question is what are you willing to do to get them sometimes God can drop these things in your lap but sometimes a lot of times it's just living life taking care of the things that we need and there there are times when we're doing better than other times and we can enjoy that and we can appreciate when we can afford um, nicer food, nicer clothes, nicer car, nicer house. But if, if affording it means that you had to sacrifice the things that matter to God in order to get there, then it wasn't right. And, um, and so that's something that any of us have to really, really look at. And that's all I, I think I want to leave everybody with this week. And I don't want to ramble. I think that it was really a rich talk and right out of scripture. <laughs> so um, I appreciate you coming and having a cup of tea with me and I hope that you're enjoying your tea and I'll see you next week. And since I can't edit this very well or at least I'm not going to try, I'm gonna just stick it right on YouTube, you're going to see me walk right around and put the camera off. So bye, thanks for coming and having a cup of tea with me.